Johnson over here. Here's another one of my philosophical lecture shorts. Today we got a really quick lecture on the argument from evil. Probably the most popular, uh, you know, weapon in the atheist is kind of like, you know, arsenal. Uh, when they usually attack the idea of a PKG God. Um, it's that by far probably the one I hear the most from any atheist, uh, and that's why we're going to talk about it. Um, now, the argument from evil is basically this. They're basically saying that if a P all knowing, all powerful, all good God, the PKG God exists, okay? The idea of the Judeo Christian concept of God. If this PKG God exists, then why is there evil in the world? If a God is all good and he's all powerful and he's all knowing, why does he allow horrible things to happen? Think of all the horrible things that happen to children who are maybe innocent. Um, we think about the Dostoevsky's of Brothers Karamazov when the brother's talking about, you know, yes, we may be sinners, but what about the children, okay? Uh, but even us, think about the horrible things that happen, the tsunamis, um, just horrible terrorist attacks, things like this, the evil that seems to be in the world. No one, at least, one of the assumptions here is at least is that we accept there is evil in the world. Now, some of us may challenge that question or challenge that idea, but I think it's a safe thing to at least just assume for this argument, evil does exist. So, if this type of God would exist, why is there evil? And the first question we're really going to look at is the logical problem. It's basically an atheist may say, well, it's illogical for a PKG God to exist and there to be evil simultaneously. Um, and that's the first way we're going to look at it. So let's see if that's the case. Is it really a contradiction for a PKG God to exist and there to be evil? Is it truly illogical? And the way this works is think about you're walking on the street, okay? Or you're walking like a suburb. Um, and, you know, you're in a neighborhood. And you see this little five-year-old girl who's playing with a ball and things like this. And as she's playing with it, the ball rolls out into the middle of the street. As the ball rolls out into the middle of the street, her motor skills aren't that great, and she's very oblivious to what's around her. You know, maybe just uh, a few yards down, down the road here, you see someone driving. Okay, as I'm walking, I see this person driving, and this guy is behind the wheel, and all he's doing is looking at his cell phone. You know, I'm already home, so I don't have to pay attention to the road anymore. I'll just look at my cell phone the whole time. I have no idea what's in front of me. Basically, this is what's going to happen. The guy's not going to look up in time, the girl's not going to get out of the way of time, and they're going to hit each other. Now, let's say I'm sitting here watching this, okay? Now, let's say the person is far enough away, okay, that, or I'll ask this, that let's say that I know that if I don't do anything, this event's going to happen. They're going to hit each other, okay? But I also know that it's within my power that I could jump in the road, grab the girl, and get out the way enough time before the car comes through here. I know I can do that without harming myself. If I, it's in my power to do it, and I know it's going to happen, and let's say I'm a good person, what do I do? Well, of course, the answer, most of us say, well, you saved the girl. That's exactly right. Now, let's take me out of the picture. Why does the girl get hit? If there's a PKG God. Because think about it. I'm not there. It's about to happen, this evil event, right? This, this kind of horrible thing's about to happen. If God is all-powerful, he can do whatever he wants. If he's all-knowing, he knows what's going to happen. He knows what happens. He doesn't do it. If he's all-good, just like in my situation, doesn't he act? And the question is, then why are there so many dead little girls around? Or why are there so many dead little children around? Or why are there so many dead people and evil things happen all the time? If he knows this, he's powerful enough, and he's all good to prevent any of it. Why would he let it happen? And so that's the first uh, the logical problem, is saying, is, see, that wouldn't happen. If he's really a PKG god, he wouldn't allow evil. But then there's some kind of retorts to this, okay? The theist may claim, let's see, the theist may claim something like this. What about something like... Uh, Maybe soul building thing. So like maybe it was a soul building or character building uh, thing for us. So like this event happened, horrible things going on. The little girl died, but maybe as, as a family, her family comes closer together. Maybe they were apart and it brings them together. Or maybe this guy learns that how he you know, can never do this again. You know, he will never forgive himself. Maybe he becomes a better person and try to make people aware of what happens when you text and drive. Something like this. So maybe it's a soul building thing. And that's really good to help build our characters, all right? Others, and probably one of the most famous kind of uh, answer to this, um, and I'll give Alvin Plantinga some credit, even though he's not the only one. Okay? Alvin Plantinga is probably one of the leading, um, basically, philosophical theists. Okay? He's a, a theologian, but he's still a philosopher all right? uh, that's alive right now. And he says it's because of free will, that God gives us free will. And this guy was free to look at his phone or not, and he killed somebody. Yes, that sucks, but he was had total free will. And, it's better for us, it's more good for human beings to be free and to do what they want instead of being mechanistic machines and God stepping all the time and controlling every bit of our action. That would be worse for us. And so he is truly good because he gives us free will, all right? And having free will then allows sometimes evil to happen. But it's a truly good thing to have. And so you can have evil, according to Plantinga, and him being all good God because he gives us freedom. Now some may say the atheist goes, 
well, why can't, can't Gali step in for a few of those, like the Hitlers, the Pol Pot, something like this, and prevent them? Um, and basically, Plantinga's argument on this is if God were to jeopardize anyone's free will, he jeopardizes all of our free will. If you'll step in for Hitler, then you'll step in for me if I would do something. And so God gives us total freedom and stays hands off according to Plantinga and allows things to happen. Okay? And that's, what, that's his argument for it. So maybe that's the case. And at least it seems that Theus does have a point. That it seems at least possible you could have a PKG God and still have evil. Okay? Maybe because of freedom, or maybe of soul building activities, whatever it might be. There seem to at least be possibilities that that could happen. So it's not illogical. A PKG God could exist and there be evil. But the next question is, what about the evidential problem, as we call it? And that is, look around the evidence around the world. Isn't there just too much evil for it to be an all-good God? Okay? So that's basically the idea. Okay, maybe some evil, but isn't there too much evil? Too much evil? Okay? For example, all right, think about, um, okay, here's something. Let's go back to the soul building. Okay, maybe he's building our souls. But how many people have to die for us to realize something's a bad idea? Okay? Um, you know, during the Holocaust, maybe, you know, genocide wasn't even a term used until the Geneva Convention, okay? And so, even though genocide had been around, genocide didn't really exist until then, okay? And so, maybe, perhaps the Holocaust did teach us about genocide and its evils. But did it really take 10 million people for us to learn, it, learn about that? Couldn't a few less learn about that? Maybe it's just too much evil, okay? Or think about a tsunami. Yes, a tsunami happens in 2006 in Indonesia, okay? And a lot, of, over 100,000 people died, Okay? I understand that. Now we have tsunami warnings. We've learned a lot. Those people learned about more like tsunamis and what to do in those events. And they've come closer together as a people. But did it really have to take between 100,000 and 150,000 for us to realize that? I mean, couldn't you just came down and told us and say, hey, there's going to be a tsunami. It'd be better if you do this and put these warnings up. Now, some say, well, it's kind of like a kid. We don't learn until we maybe get punished or we fall down until we get back up, right? Okay, so maybe it has to happen. But doesn't it seem just too much evil? And that's kind of what goes on. Now, a theist, I think, main argument here would be, well, part is free will, okay, that I, that we're still free, and yes, we can do these really evil things, and that's what's to happen. So that maybe can take care of the too much evil from human beings, but what about this thing like a tsunami or natural events that happen, that have no, we have no control over? And let's say there are even sometimes when really horrible things happen in a place where we don't even expect it. So you can't really even blame us to expect this horrible thing to happen, or a plane malfunctions, or something like this, okay, and disappears out in the ocean, right? Something like this happens, where they say, well, once again, the theist could say, well, it's obviously soul building. It's here to build, okay, our character. And so yeah. some talk about soul building. Perhaps, you know, uh, these crazy events happen, these freak accidents happen, but it still builds our soul. And think about, like, uh, during 9-11, when that occurred, okay? This horrible event happens. The, two, the Twin Towers, they fall down. But after that, look at how the Americans respond. As, as divided as we were before that, we come together. Even though it was for a very short period, but we did all come together we kind of, and kind of have this kind of uh, connection with everyone, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, people who thought this way, people who looked that way, all came together. Now, it was for a very short time, and you know, 13 years later, here we are, we're probably more divided and hate each other more than ever. But at least for that moment, it happens. So, in some way, maybe it is a soul-building thing. And some can even point out that maybe uh, a student told me the other day that we human beings may have very short memories. And... I said, is there too much evil? Is that 10 million people too many during the Holocaust? You know, couldn't have been less. Some say, well, think about it. Genocide still go on, and we still allow it to happen. So maybe it isn't enough. Or maybe, like, the 9-11 thing, that happens, but then we quickly forget, and we go back to the exact same ways we were before it, and maybe we didn't learn anything. And so that's, maybe they're right. Maybe it's, it's not too much evil. Maybe we need that, and maybe it does build our characters. That's one way we can look at it, and that's what the thesis is going to have to say. Um... Especially these for natural disasters or freak accidents. They can't fall back on freedom for all of them. All right? Now, one thing is this. is Maybe that is correct, okay? That, that God does do this to help build our characters. But the question is, you know, that's great for us, but what about the people who had to be the martyrs who didn't choose to be, okay? What about that little girl we told who gets hit by the car so her family can learn? Or what about the people stuck in that building? Or what about the people who go down in that airplane? Or the people who have to die during that tsunami, okay? What about things like this? And we think of that as, like, what about those people? Do, would they say the same thing, that they're happy to be a martyr? Now, some say, well, they're at the right hand of God in heaven, or he has another plan for them. Maybe, but would you want to be that person? And so sometimes I kind of say, that's great, but what about those other people, the people who have to perish in it? And that sometimes bothers me. So that's one that I'll let, uh, look at this. Now, one last thing I want to say is, is just ask this. We've seen that it seems at least that it is totally possible to have a PKG God and have evil. 
even though this question of too much evil is kind of on there, maybe you can, maybe it's not, it seems to be at least be possible, whether it's illogical or evidential, all right? But one thing, so we see the atheist argument isn't a totally sound one here. It's not one that's going to be, that's going to convince a theist, okay, or most theists. But I want to ask this, from a theistic perspective, and the last thing I want to ask is, can God commit evil? That's a question we should ask ourselves. Can a PKG God commit evil if he is all good? And it seems that he would have to be able to. First, people say, well, if he can't commit evil, then he's not all powerful, so he has to be able to. So what that means is it seems that God has the capacity to be evil, or at least even all evil. So within him, he seems to also be all evil too. And that may be okay. Now, that can be in some Christians would be like, no, 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 don't say that. But at least the capacity is there. He has the capacity to be all evil. And therefore, within him, inherently, he can be evil. Which would is kind of a strange way to think about God. God could commit evil. Maybe he does commit evil. I mean, some of the Old Testament, we look at that, he does some pretty harsh things. Some may even say borderline evil. Okay, you're talking about killing an entire race of people sometimes in it. So, maybe he can. Uh, St. Augustine, or St. Augustine even talks about that actually the capacity for evil has to be in God. He has to be able to do evil because if he could not, Okay? Then he couldn't really be truly good. And what that means is if, think about Think about a person who cannot, is like a machine. And this machine is created to only do good acts. And all it can do is go around and do good. Good here, do good here, do good there. Do we really say that that machine is good now? What it seems to be is that you need to be responsible for your actions in order to be good. The reason I'm a good person, or let's say I was, okay? The reason I'm a good person is because... I have, I could have done evil, I could have done the wrong thing, but I decided to choose and be responsible and choose this other thing. It seems I have to be able to be evil in order to be good. The capacity for evil has to be there, so I constantly keep choosing the good, all right? And so if I can't commit evil and I always do the good, then am I really good? It seems that I wouldn't be in the sense we think about it. So St. Augustine said, God must at least have the capacity to be all evil if he can be all good. But God, of course, continues according to Augustine, okay? continues to keep doing the good over and over again, even though he could easily do the wrong thing. And so that's why maybe God could commit evil. And that's something that we think about, is maybe an all-powerful, all all-knowing, all-good God, if he wants to, could have committed evil. And sometimes, maybe something evil happens, and maybe it is for the good. Who knows, okay? I mean, a lot of things we may, you know, not understand right now, maybe something later. And that's, of course, what a thieves would say. Maybe there's some plan there. Now, what in the end, what I want to kind of look at here is, I don't think the argument from evil, even though an atheist is going to bring bring it up and bring this up a lot, it may make us question the idea, but it does not defeat the idea that the PKG God could still exist. Um, but in the end, what I think it's going to, we're really looking at between atheism and we're looking at uh, between theism, you know, is there ever going to be an answer, an argument that solves one way or the other? And I think what we've seen through all the arguments we've talked about and what we're doing here is that no, it's not. You're not going to be able to answer as much as an atheist wants, you're not going to be able to dispel God, okay? You're not going to be able to throw it out like that. But of course, as much as the theist wants, you're never going to be able to prove the point that God exists. You're never going to be able to disprove the atheist. And so, in some sense, even though these are both positions an atheist has and a theist has that you cannot hold, it seems both the atheist and the theist have quite a level of faith. And that's one thing I want to get at. It takes a lot of faith for an atheist to put all their cards in the idea that there is no God. Okay? Just as much faith, I would say, as it takes for someone like a theist to believe there is a God. And so a lot of times I want to point out these two positions, atheism and theism, aren't really that far apart when it comes to thinking them. They're actually doing a very similar thing. They're having deep faith in what they believe in, okay? And both are positions that can never be proven, whether they want to say it or not. And so I want to look at that as maybe faith, as much as it is always thought with theism and with God and religion, maybe faith is not a religious idea. Maybe faith is something very human, something we have to do. And these are just two examples. Atheism and theism are just two examples of that faith in action that all human beings maybe have to have, you know? Some of us may have to have faith just to get up in the morning, you know, or faith in science, or faith in God, or faith in philosophy, or faith in Plato, something like this, right? So, or faith in Socrates, we might say. So, that's something to just keep in mind. But anyway, that's it for now. If you have any questions, please email me, and I'll talk to you guys next time, or see you guys next time on my Philosophical Lecture Thank you.